Hello everybody, happy Wednesday. It's Darlene with Featherweight Doctor. It has been a wonderful week this week. So Expo 2021 starts today, yay. So because I am actually teaching right at this very moment live, I decided to just do a quick pre-recorded video so that everybody can stay on top of their quilt as you go project called Winter Solstice that I designed myself. So tonight's block is uh, called Snowflake. It is week six of our eight week, actually technically 10 week because there's a week before and a week after. Um, this is another one of those applique quilts or applique blocks. I want to apologize right up front. There's a lot of cutting tonight. I'm so sorry, but how do you make a snowflake block that isn't somewhat intricate so this is going to be another one of those scenarios where it's dealer's choice so you can either do a fusible um applique technique with the seam a seam you can do a raw edge technique where you just cut it out of fabric um and then stitch it down through the center you'll see what i mean here is our here is our pattern. If you have paid your entrance fee into Winter Solstice, you'll be getting a video. I mean, you'll be getting an email with a link to the pattern so you can do your template and the video, this video instruction on Tuesday. And then for everybody else who likes joining us on Wednesday for the educational aspect of it, we're going to just release this video on Wednesday at four o'clock Pacific Standard Time, the time I would go live on Facebook and YouTube. My heart is is uh, empty today because I am not getting to be with you guys live. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, if this is the first time you're joining me, I do three shows a week. And Friday will still be on and live. Um, it's normally called my Sip and Sew. But because it's Expo this week and I am working crazy, crazy, crazy hours, I'm just calling it my Sip and Sip because I am not sure I'm going to feel much like sewing by the time Friday at four o'clock rolls around, but I hope you can join me for that. All right, let's get into the instructions. Let's go over here to the board so you guys can see a little bit better and let's talk about the design. So as you can see, this is a pretty intricate looking design. Um, I, would, I use the light box to be able to trace the pattern onto my fusible web. So I have my snowflake all cut out here. I decided as a um, cool technique that I was going to pre-quilt the whole back of the quilt, the whole background of the quilt, and then lay the snowflake over the top of it um, as another artistic detail. I This is fusible, so I am going to iron this down. You can see on here that I have a grid drawn onto my fabric. Um, there, This is one of those scenarios that is what I call a dealer's choice type situation. You can quilt like I did. Can they see that? Okay. The detail of it. Okay. Where I quilted every other box, I drew the whole grid out and then I quilted every other box in free motion. Or if you are not comfortable with free motion, you can just grid it on a cross hatch type basis with your walking foot whatever you're most comfortable with. But we are definitely going to just do the quilting on here first, and then we are going to iron, take the iron to it to get rid of my lines, and then we are going to put the snowflake down, centered as much as possible, okay. obviously. And then I'm going to stitch through the center just to hold it down. Again, this is done with fusible web. On the back side. make sure if you're doing the fusible web, technique that you attach the fusible web to the back side of the quilt of your fabric for your snowflake and not the top side. Very important. Okay, so I have my machine. Let's go over here to the machine view. I have my machine set to free motion mode. This is my 1934 school bell. She is amazingly fast. I like to sew um, free motion quilts pretty fast. I like to sew fast in general. Uh, I sound like Ricky Bobby from Talladega Nights. I like to go fast. Okay, sorry, movie reference. Um, so what I did was I have my um, my thread stand set up. I have my thread. I'm threaded. I have put blue painter's tape over my feed dogs um, so that way I can uh, make sure my feed dogs don't get caught 
I'm bringing my thread up to my bobbin thread up to the top of the quilt and I have set my stitch regulator which is my lever here not reverse not forward but kind of in the middle I call it dead horizon so I'm just going to finish my little fill technique on these last six blocks and then we will take take to the um the iron to get rid of my lines and to put the snowflake on um so I I venture to say by this point in the week this is day one of Sew Expo I have a four hour workshop um that I will be at the tail end of by the time you guys see this it's gonna go from um one to five. Oh, real quick, Ray. Oh, shoot. Um, I'm gonna hold on, guys. I want to show you something real quick. So, in order for this technique to look right, I wanted to draw it out on here so you can see what I'm doing because there is some technique in making this look appropriate when it's done. So, you we have a rectangle with our block. Um, I used my ruler to make a one inch grid pattern um, through the center of the block. And again, if you're cross hatching it, you'll just quilt over the drawn lines. But um, if you want to fill, I want to show you guys the technique. Technically speaking, you could have put the snowflake down on the grid and then quilted it, but it would have made it more complicated because you would have had to steer around it, and that's a lot more complicated. Let me see if I can bring this a little closer so you guys can see it. Okay, so how this goes is what you're gonna start by bringing your threads up and weaving on a 45 degree diagonal, like so, making sure that you fill the entire block don't don't do this it just it's not the whole point is to have it look like the grid on the back here you guys see the shadows and if you're not filling the entire space it loses the effect okay the other thing i want to encourage you with is because this can you see this okay okay is a square think about how you're going to turn around because you're basically going back and forth like this and i always make sure i hit the corners so it's really crisp like that but if but think about how you want to change direction so if you want to point use a point where you're point 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 fine but don't or if you want to you 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 fine but don't point you you point it it starts to look like a bit of a mess so think in advance before you start about how you want to turn corners um and so you you start i kind of started through the center of the block and I filled one side of the block and then I filled the other side of the block. I did have some pins in my quilt sandwich so that the fabric didn't scoot around and leave puckers and tucks on the bottom. So once you get to the bottom of your project, what I did was, so I didn't have to break threads, is I traveled out here in the outer part of it and then came here and started all over again. So I didn't have to break threads on this whole, see, like so. Okay, I will stop being particular now uh, that I feel like I've given you all the instruction. All right, let's go back to the project here. Now, this line weaving technique is actually one of my favorite, um, favorite type of free motion quilting techniques. And for me, for some reason, I would highly recommend if you kind of want to give this a go for the first time, practice on some practice fabric before you go to your actual sandwiches. But for me, moving 
um, oh, you're low here. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth is easier than side to side, side to side, side to side. I don't know why. But for me, that's, that is easier. So you should practice on your end and see which one is easier for you. Um, it might just be the way my brain is wired as to why this back and forth makes more sense to me than the side to side. I hit the edge, so I'm just gonna travel down here in the gutter of the block to start my last two. All done. This whole thing took me about, because I just am at the end here. This whole thing took me about, um, I'd say, 25 minutes. So I've, I've quilted the whole top. Um, what I'm going to do now, you can see the back, the shadow on the back. I'm going to go over here to my ironing station. And I'm going to move some things out of the way. Oh, I was going to show you how I did this marking real quick. So I used my Omni Grid, grid Ruler. This is a, the, a blank background. And what I did was I made one uh, line across here, squaring my ruler up to the edges so that it was perfectly straight. And then what I did is I flipped it around and with my friction pen, I started marking my grid out like so. Oh, well, kind of like so. like that, and then just kind of moving across the, um, the background in one inch increments, keeping my edges straight. And then once I had moved across here, then I took this and I split the difference, knowing the dimensions of my block, ran this right through the center, and used that as my next line for um, making my grid. So I just wanted to show you how I made my grid fairly easily. And then the beauty, the beauty of this friction pen is that it just disappears with the iron. So I'm gonna take my little iron here and I'm going to roll over and look at that, it's like magic. All of my lines come out and it looks like I just went for it. Look at how cute that looks. Can you guys see the the shadow, does that translate well? Okay, and you can see it on the back. So, I have this beautiful textured background palette now, and now I'm going to take my snowflake that I actually had Reagan painstakingly, <laughs> uh, painstakingly uh, cut out for me. Um, I used, again, a shadow box, light box for, um, uh, taking the template pattern and getting it onto the fusible web. Just have to get one little edge going here and then it should all peel off. Okay, good. Ooh, ooh, don't stick to each other. What? I said, <laughs> <laughs> don't stick to each other. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna center my top to bottom here and then my right to left. This is a rocket science, folks. So if this is not perfectly center, it's really not. I refuse to uh, lose sleep over the deal. Let's just put it that way. This, this, okay. So now that I have it just the way that I want it, let me just stand back for a second and take it in. Yep, that's where I want it. I am going to iron it down. So you have to read the instructions on whatever fusible web you are using. Um, this is the steam seam, and so I have my iron set 
uh, obviously there's no steam because it's an antique iron, but um, so if you have a steam, I know that steam seam does not like the steam on and they want you to set it to a cotton setting, but you have to be careful because some of it will actually scald. You have to maybe have your temperature a little lower. So just whatever you are material or medium you're using for the fusible part, just please um, make sure that uh, you read the instructions first. Okay, so let's go up here for a second. So I have my block. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Um, and all I'm gonna do is just have put some um, registration um, quilting in just to hold it down. I actually, this is where the dealer's choice thing comes in. It wouldn't have been a terrible idea in my particular opinion to have it be a raw edge applique so it really kind of frayed and looked kind of delicate. Um, so all I'm gonna do here, let's go to the deck of the machine here. I'm going to, um, just do some wiggle lines just to hold it down. I'm not overly doing this because I want it to kind of uh, puff up, if you will. Okay, and I'm gonna go up the other direction. And then I'm gonna go put my needle down there so I can cut these threads. So now I'm just gonna come up this arm, this arm, this arm, and then I'll do the other side. Now, if you have a more modern machine that you're doing this so along with me on, and it has the ability to do a satin stitch, which is where it would kind of zigzag back and forth, that would be kind of a cool technique also. But obviously on the featherweight, with the thick shaft, there isn't going to be any satin stitching. And sometimes something a little bit more primitive just looks kind of interesting. So, yeah. oh my gosh, that's so cute, Ray. This turned out so cute. Do you want to show them up front? Yeah, I'm going to show them on the high. Oh, let's make sure I'm disconnected here. Okay. Oh my gosh. So here it is. There's our snowflake block. Oh my goodness, it turned out so cute. I love it. So again, just to reiterate, I'm going to go back here. If you are not comfortable with free motion, don't sweat it. You can still put the, the grid lines in and all you're gonna do is just cross hatch. So you're gonna sew over your drawn lines with the grid totally complete. Don't sweat about the fact that the free motion is, is not in your wheelhouse. Um, the free motion, this particular free motion where there's just the weaving back and forth is actually one of the easier types of free motion to start with. So it might be kind of fun for you to practice on some other pieces and see how it turns out and see if you're willing to, you know, um, <clears throat> jump off the, the, the cliff with me <laughs> and try out free motion on your featherweight. All right. So the schedule for the rest of the week is, oh, oh yeah, real quick. Before we get um, too much, we're, we're going to end here in a minute, but I wanted to show off. So Mel Mitchell is a, is a good friend of mine. She lives in, um, she's from San Antonio, but now lives in Mississippi on the Gulf. And uh, her and her husband are on a motorhome RV trip. And so they're in Key Largo, Florida. And her husband has been joining us on this sew along. And so I want to show off Joe Mitchell's Quilt as you go blocks for winter solstice. 
Um, I would like to just say, um, as a side point, that there I see tulip pink fabric in there. <laughs> you guys are like, yeah, yeah, Darlene, tulip pink. <laughs> So way to go, Joe. <laughs> All right, guys. I, uh, I, I miss not talking to you. This feels very empty, just FYI. <laughs> and I won't make a habit of it, I promise. So I'm looking forward to catching up with everybody on Friday during the sip and sip. You can sip any beverage of your choice. Um, we are not going to get silly. That, that's not the point. I just want to catch up with you guys a little bit. So normally it would be the sip and sew and I'd be working on a quilt project from Tula Pink. But um, but I think I might be over uh, overwhelmed by Friday. And so I don't think I'm going to be in the mood to, to sew. I find that if I'm overwhelmed or overtired and I start sewing, I usually have to use the seam ripper a lot. And I don't like to unsew things. So I hope everybody's having a great week. I'm really looking forward to seeing you on Friday at four o'clock Pacific Standard Time on YouTube and Facebook. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys on Friday. Bye.